The brain is immensely fascinating. It's the most complicated system we know. But at the same time, it's only a silent greyish lump inside the cranium. The brain gives people the ability to raise children, build advanced societies, and construct high technological systems, but also to destroy, bedevil, and tear down. In the brain, the outer and the inner worlds are represented. So there they are transformed into subjective experiences. In the brain, our thoughts, feelings and behaviors emanate, as well as the differences between us in personality and memories. After you've studied the functional anatomy of the brain, the neural networks that make up the biological substrate of cognition, emotion and personality, you will most likely agree with me that to understand the human psyche, you need to use more than just empathy and your senses. Just as the natural sciences have disentangled the many mysteries of the starry night sky and given us a new insight of our place in the universe, modern neuroscience has helped us to unlock many of the riddles of the mind and thereby change the basic concept of what it means to be a human. The brain is made up of three parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. These are the main constituents of the central nervous system, which apart from the brain also includes the spinal cord. The cerebrum and the cerebellum are made up of two hemispheres. Each cerebral hemisphere is further divided into five large anatomical areas, or lobes. At the back is the occipital lobe. Below and in front, just as the thumb on a boxing glove, is the temporal lobe. On top is the parietal lobe. At the front is the frontal lobe. The insular lobe is folded deep within the lateral sulcus. Yet another lobe is sometimes discerned, the limbic lobe, consisting of a handful of anatomical regions around the so-called callosal commissure. A prerequisite for the functioning of the brain is that it can exchange information with the rest of the body and also with the surroundings. This communication comes about through different pathways, mostly by nerve fibers. So in a quick and exact manner, they convey information from the body and the surroundings up into the brain and they also transport information out of the brain. To a lesser part, this communication takes place via the blood circulation, hormones and immunological signals. So taken together, these pathways for information makes it possible for the brain to continuously scan what happens inside the body and also around it. And this enables us to make predictions and to constantly monitor and regulate our actions, which then impacts on the events that we are currently engaged in. The stream of afferent information to the brain, which emanates from below via the spinal cord, the brainstem and into the cerebellum, is called the bottom-up flow. This initial information is raw and crude. The further up it travels in the nervous system, and the more brain structure it passes, the more filtered, processed and integrated with neural information from other sources it becomes. After passing the thalamus, the extraception from the external world and the interception from the visual organs first arrive to the posterior parts of the cerebral cortex and then stream frontally. 
Rather soon after entering the cortex, they are divided into a dorsal and a ventral flow towards the anterior parts. In the dorsal stream, the spatial and contextual aspects of the sensory information, such as where and how, is decoded. So together, this recreates an inner, three-dimensional picture of the outer world. In the ventral stream, the what dimension is decoded. This means the meaning of what is going on. So at this stage, the incoming information to the brain gets an emotional meaning and is also compared with memories of earlier experienced events. So this dorsal ventral gradient in the bottom-up stream is also associated with cognitive and emotional processing of the information that is currently processed. So cognitive information, such as thoughts and visuospatial information, is handled more dorsally, and emotive information is handled more ventrally. The efferent streams of information which are initiated inside the brain and result in motor behavior and other kinds of actions emanate mostly from the anterior parts of the brain. In the hypothalamus, around here, they stream down out through the brainstem and to the effector organs in the body, mostly muscles. This stream is called the top-down flow of information. To study the brain's anatomy and functions is about as big a task as learning the anatomy and physiology of the entire rest of the body. There is a long series of organs or brain regions to get familiar with. They all have their own morphometry and functions, and they all take care of different tasks. They are also linked with each other serially and in parallel in complex neural circuits. The brain is the body's most complex organ, but whoever manages to force this subject will be rewarded with many new exciting viewpoints that helps to understand the complexity of human behavior and psychiatric conditions.